Remember this thing? When the Dyson Zone first launched last year, most people ridiculed it for its appearance or its price. But now, after seeing what the wildfires has done, some people might seriously consider buying it, no matter how stupid it looks. Air pollution is a global problem, and it's been exacerbated by wildfires all around the world. But the orange skies in the big city and the fervent media coverage of the incident have made people more concerned with air quality more than ever. Here in New York, we've seen a wave of air quality alerts from the health department that the air outside is unsafe to breathe. This smoke and fog over New York and the rest of the Northeast is a warning from nature. The term AQI has been on people's radars, but what is AQI? On a given day, when you're looking at the AQI, the program is taking the one of the six criteria pollutants that EPA regulates, whichever one is really the worst that day, providing the most risk, it takes that criteria pollutant and it pops the concentration into the AQI equation. Think of AQI as a yardstick that runs from zero to 500. The higher the AQI value, the greater the level of air pollution and the greater the health risk. This filter has been engineered to work in the dirtiest day in the dirtiest town, even if you're like, you know, in a smoke blizzard. It's always going to deliver air that's cleaner than if you weren't wearing it at all. I'm here at a science lab at NYU School of Medicine in New York City. Today, we're going to be putting the Dyson Zone's air filtration features to the test. First, we'll be using a real-time continuous air particulate monitor and counter to measure the amount of air pollutants, dust, and dirt left in the air after a filtration cycle. What we really care about measuring is PM, which stands for particulate matter. Dyson claims the device can remove PM10s, which are particles with diameters of 10 micrometers, and smaller particulates like PM2.5s, which are inhalable particles with diameters with 2.5 micrometers and smaller. Dyson's visor uses an electrostatic filter and activated charcoal in its layers to remove particulates. The wearable features a contact-free magnetic visor that is supposed to flow purified air into the wearer's nose and mouth. The filter has three flow rates, rest, which is level one, light, which is level two, and moderate, which is level three. All of our testing will be done on level three to match Dyson's criteria for testing. We're conducting testing in three settings. First, in the lab on the city street then on the subway platform. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's reading 69 microgram per cubic meter. So the HEPA filters located on the earmuffs dropped it down to one microgram and zero. It's 99 to 100% efficient in filtering particles from the air. This P-track is gonna measure the number concentration of particles. It's reading now about 6,100 particles per cubic centimeter. And we're gonna see what, how the Dyson does with this. It's already below 1,000, below 200. So it went from 6,100, it's down to 50 particles per cc, even scrubbing out the small ultrafine particles. That would be equivalent to some clean rooms in the chip making manufacturing industry. So right now we have the same device that we're using in the lab to detect PM 2.5. 2.5 microns, the smallest, gets all the way deep in your lungs. And right now we have the wildfire smoke blowing in from the west from the Canadian wildfires. So normally New York City air is about 12 micrograms per cubic meter. And this is up to 113. Um, so it's really high today. So go ahead. You can see it's immediately going down. 83, 73, 60, and it's all the way down to zero. So it's filtering out all the particles, 2.5 and smaller. So now we're gonna test the number of particles that are in the air, big particles, small particles, ultrafine, everything in between, all the way down to 180, 200. It's doing incredibly well. The way it works is it's creating positive pressure right against your face. And once the air is blowing against your face, it is pushing out all the particles from the outside air and excluding them from your breathing zone. Right now we're reading 260 micrograms per cubic meter, which is what we typically see in the subways. Um, some subways are actually worse than this, some subways are a little bit better, uh, but this is nothing atypical. So the contributions are going down, and right now it's about to hit zero. So we just saw the particle counter pick up 20,000 particles per cubic centimeter, 
and it dropped to under 1,000 once we hit it on the flow rate number three. Other than filtering out particle matters, Dyson also claims the headphones activated carbon filters can remove odors and gases like NO2 and VOCs. We couldn't really test out this function since these were just not easily detectable in the city streets or on the subway. We were, however, able to test VOC levels with a little trick that the NYU student at the lab showed us. Can you explain what VOCs are and why they might matter? So VOCs stand for volatile organic compounds, and they're usually really smelly. So think paint thinners, paints, alcohol, all these other things. In high concentrations, they can be really noxious, and they can in fact knock you out. Some VOCs have been shown to be carcinogenic, so cancer-causing and cause all different sorts of illnesses. Um, so that's why it's really important to filter them out. So the background VOCs in the environment are really hard to detect. What we're gonna do is we're gonna grab an alcohol wipe and spread it out, get the concentrations up in the air. It was already at one, it's going up to eight, 11, 13, so we have a lot of VOCs. And then we're gonna waft the wipe through the headphones. So as you can see, it's staying below one. It's filtering it out really well. It's Dyson, and Dyson knows particles and filtrations. That's what they're famous for. The device, actually I'm really impressed that they would incorporate and minimize in the volume of putting the HEPA filters in the earmuffs, and it really was a nice design. Ambient particles, are the main contributor to the adverse health effects of air pollution. So wearing a mask of this type will remove particles is essential at protecting your, your lungs and your heart. It'd be worth wearing during the wildfire smoke episodes. So the Dyson Zone works. I can confidently put on the mask and know it's going to filter out my surrounding air, but it has its limitations. First is the battery. The zone will just shut off after an hour and a half of air filtration on the highest level. Sure, you probably won't be using it nonstop for an hour and a half outside, but if you're also listening to music, expect a shorter runtime. You'll also need to make sure that you plug this thing in when you're not using it, because it doesn't hold on to the charge even after you've taken it off. Our deputy editor, Sherlyn, noted that there were many times where she would just pick up the zone and it would be out of juice. This isn't super practical in the real world when, say, there's another wildfire. Ultimately, the zone is designed to be headphones first, air filter second. Most people already have headphones and don't want to spend a ton of money for a feature that they mostly don't need. If you know you want an air filter, you might consider an alternative on the market that does the job for a fraction of the price. And we just learned that things like wearable air purifiers exist. You can buy something like this from Amazon for under 50 bucks. That actually feels really good. It feels just like the Dyson Zone where the air is like flushing into my face. So how long does this last? 500 hours. I would say it's pretty easy to wear. <laughs> Stick it to your shirt. Maybe it doesn't have headphones connected to it, but it's not $900. The price makes the Dyson Zone unattainable for the average consumer. Dyson is an established brand and people might buy the zone purely due to brand loyalty and trust, but the company might have aimed a little too high here. We can only hope that future generations will have improved battery, functionality, and access. After all the AQI warnings we've been exposed to lately, there might be other companies working on similar products that could combat our exposure to pollutants. Competitors like LG are already making wearable air purifiers that don't require bulky headphones. For detailed evaluations on how the zone performs as headphones and more, make sure to check out Engadget.com. And for more coverage of biotech news related to health and fitness, subscribe to our YouTube channel.